Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll have a look at the UK Met Office run looking at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days and then we'll have a look at the longer range with all the various computer models and the ensembles as we continue seeing this signal for much colder weather towards the end of April and start of May. Nothing like anything we'd see in January or February, but it's definitely going to bring quite a chill to the air. Overnight frosts are very likely, and we could be seeing even a little bit of wintriness, perhaps over higher ground, and maybe some hail grapple sort of showers more widely. But it is looking really quite cold, and it's pretty much nailed on now that it's going to be at least colder than average. How cold it gets... Uh, the timing of it and how severe is still yet to be determined. And that's what we're going to be exploring in today's video. So make sure you stay tuned for the second half. Just remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in the description. So do start on the live radar. It's pretty mundane at the moment. Nothing too much is happening. A few showers across parts of Ireland. Um, and maybe a few down the far southwest. But for the majority, it's quite dry. Some cloud being, being brought in by quite a brisk easterly wind. As we'll see in a minute with the uh, pressure charts from the GFS. It does look like a really quite wintry pressure pattern. But because it's now end of April with the air originating from Europe, which isn't too cold now, it's more of a stable, sort of milder air mass. Um, so we're seeing temperatures in the mid-teens, so around, maybe slightly above average, especially further westwards, away from the eastern uh, eastern coast, where it's a little bit more breezy. Um, yes, a bit of a chill to the air, but it's nothing crazy, um, which... Um, if we had a look at these pressure charts in January and February, we would think it would be sort of a beast from the east like pattern, but nothing like that at the moment. It's pretty dry and pretty decent. With this high pressure to our north, we have got all those cut-off lows that we had looked at quite significantly over the past few weeks, because if one of these cut-off lows had sat over the UK, we'd be seeing similar scenes to what Austria, Hungary, Croatia are seeing, what parts of Spain and Portugal are seeing with all this heavy rain and thundery activity that's all uh, across the near, near continents. And of course, these lows will be moving around, giving severe conditions, heavy rain, um, and much cooler temperatures as around as well. Luckily, the UK is just to the north of these cutoff lows, so we're not seeing anything like that at this stage. If you do have a look at those temperatures, can see generally across Europe, it's not too bad. Across the UK, the warmest temperatures are for central areas, western areas, and actually the far northwest, towards Manchester, Liverpool, up towards Blackpool, Southport, and Formby, looking pretty decent um, in those areas. Because, of course, with an easterly wind uh, coming off the uh, uh, higher ground across central parts of England, we get a bit of the fern effect where the air descends, compresses and warms up, so giving those temperatures a, a couple of degrees lift than elsewhere. And of course, along the east coast you see more blues mixing in, and that's temperatures more down towards the low teens, maybe 10 to 12 degrees with the chilly easterly flow, because of course the North Sea is still pretty cold this time of year, only around 8, 9, 10 degrees. It's warming up, but it's still pretty chilly. So it's cooling those surface winds down as they come on shore. So yeah, quite a mixed bag across the UK in terms of temperatures being chilly in the east, warmer further westward, especially in the northwest region, but it's not too bad by any means. So do have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation and temperature over the next few days. You can see at the moment, just a bit of cloud around in a few spots, nothing too crazy. And as we look towards this evening, still cloud around, and for tomorrow there could be a few showers within thicker cloud across central areas, but nothing crazy. And we could see a few heavier pulses of rain, and maybe some thundery showers breaking out across parts of southern Wales, southwest England, southern parts of Ireland. Very... Uh, well, there's potential there, but it's very difficult to say exactly if those will come off and with what intensity. Could be quite a large outbreak of heavy showers or could just be a smackering of lighter uh, scattered showers. So we'll have to see exactly how that does play out. If you are in this region, do make sure to keep up to date with the live radar because none of the models are going to pimp on this exactly. It's very difficult to forecast these scenarios. So it is just one of these days in the southwest tomorrow afternoon where we could just be seeing a few showers developing or quite a few showers developing. And it is, of course, going to just be keeping an eye on that radar. 
Beyond that, those showers do move away. We see potentially some more showers through Saturday evening across the far south coast with some thicker cloud, potentially a little bit of the cut-off lows bringing a bit of instability there, but nothing too crazy. And through Sunday, some thicker cloud in a few spots, some showers across northern England, but nothing too crazy. And again, through Monday, a few showers here and there, but mostly uh, partly cloudy skies. And that continues through Tuesday, but you can see the wind is veering more of a northerly wind by this stage. Uh, it's more in from the north. Not amazingly cold at this stage. If we do have a look at the pressure charts, you can see high pressure at the top with that wind coming in from a nor or north to northeasterly direction. And we look at those upper air temperatures. It is starting to cool down in the north. And those colder air masses are likely to come our way. A good few degrees drop is likely. And originating from the Arctic is going to be chilly over the coming weeks. So we do have a look at the max temperatures just to finish up on the UK Met Office run, see what they're showing over the next five days. Nothing too crazy, just similar to what we've seen at the moment with warmest temperatures in the west, especially the northwest, 17, 18 degrees, but more widely, 14 to 16 degrees, a little bit chilly on the east coast. And that continues mid to low single digits overnight, maybe holding up in a few spots with more cloud. And tomorrow afternoon, very similar, 16, 17 degrees, perhaps those warmest temperatures shifting slightly further southwards. With that, but still quite warm in the west, 16, 17 degrees, maybe chillier further eastwards. That continues into Sunday as well, 16, 17 degrees in the far southwest, northeast. 8 to 10 degrees uh, and again monday very similar maybe it's tad colder 14 15 degree highs and by tuesday temperatures still lowering 14 to 16 degree maxes further northwards and eastwards a little bit chillier um, and you see by early as of wednesday more colder air more widespread frost and that is something we do need to keep an eye on so we do have a look now at the long range models see how it is developing um, over the next couple of weeks so you can see at the moment Quite a brisky steady wind and as i said if this was a winter chart we'd be very cold indeed bitterly cold easterly wind but being sort of end of april um sort of middle to second half of spring it's not too cold at all and look at those upper air temperatures it is nothing too crazy but of course coming in from the east it is still a little bit on the chilly side so do you run through that high pressure stays to our north those cutoff lows to our south bring that heavier rain we could see those cutoff lows move slightly further northwards potentially giving you more showers at times as we saw the uk met office run over the next few days but i'm not expecting anything too major be beyond that though as we head towards day seven we see more of a northerly flow it tries to get a northerly wind in this gfs run doesn't quite get it in but by day 10 we're flooding in the air from the north, bitterly cold, northerly wind, really quite cold air coming in. Uh, of course, if it was winter, I'd, I've said this before, we'd be expecting the minus 10, maybe minus 15 degree isotherm in. If we're lucky, we could get the minus 5 to the south, uh, and the north could see sort of minus 7, minus 8. So it's not going to be crazy cold, but it's going to feel uh, really chilly out there, especially exposed northern coasts. And beyond that, to 384 hours, we stay in this northerly flow with blocking towards Greenland. So if we do run it back, just have a look at the upper air temperatures for when we see that northerly wind come in. You can see by the middle of next week, nothing too crazy, a little bit chilly, but as that northerly wind starts to get going, we see a little temporary bit of warmer air before really cold air does flood in minus five line getting to southern england potentially the minus 10 just hitting slightly uh the northern tip of scotland and we just stay in that cold air mass it does degrade away of course warms up by the strong um spring sunshine but it is really still quite chilly and if we do run it back have a look at the temperature deviation again showing it well potentially down to two to four if not down to six or eight degrees below average really quite chilly indeed as we end the run a good couple of days there well well below below average and again we have a look at the 850 hpa potential equivalent temperature again you can see nothing too crazy but then we see all the floods of purples out the north pole straight towards the uk turning things bitterly bitterly cold um for this time of year and i have to stress that it's not going to be freezing temperatures most likely the highs will be around 8 to 10 degrees maybe 11 or 12 in the south and overnight temperatures in and around freezing it's not going to be anything crazy there's not going to be widespread snow but for end of April and start of May, it is going to feel bitterly, bitterly cold. Um, and it's pretty similar to what we saw la this time last year. Uh, start of May last year was very cold. And we could be seeing something on that sort of scale. Again, this is one run and we still have to keep an eye on the other runs. Um, but at this stage, it does look like at least colder than average. Uh, and how cold is yet to be determined.
So do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Again, easily wins at the moment. We see that retrogression of the high pressure up towards Greenland, and we start to bring a northerly flow. As we head towards day 10, you can see the high pressure towards Greenland. Northerly snow starting to come in, but it hasn't fully sort of taken over yet. If you have a look at the upper air temperatures, cold air is just to our northeast, flooding in, but hasn't quite taken over. So... Similar pattern to the GFS, but just not quite getting that northerly wind in by day 10. So it could be sort of a pattern where we see it slightly delayed. Maybe the 4th or 5th of May is now the most likely time to be seeing these northerly winds. Again, it's not guaranteed to be bitterly cold, but it's looking quite likely it's going to be colder than average and potentially quite significantly colder than average. And again, if you have a look at this temperature deviation, you can see really cold air just to our northeast down into 8 to 10 degrees below average. So we have a look at the Eastern BF run, and then we'll have a look at the ensembles. You can see easterly wind at the moment, high pressure retrogressing towards Greenland over the next seven days. And we generally have an orderly flow, but we don't start to pull in the real cold air until day 10, where we do start to see a quite a direct northerly. Now, the Eastern BF run doesn't quite have that blocking holding on. So perhaps that northerly degrading a little bit, but still likely to pull in some very cold air. Perhaps not for quite as long uh, as the other runs have it coming in for, but real cold air. Uh, coming out of the Arctic, you can see real cold, 10 to 12 degrees below average in the core of that colder air, spreading potentially towards the UK. So all three runs showing a northerly evolution. Of course, the GFS running out to 384 hours has more of a northerly evolution as it's got more time to run it out. The other runs just showing the northerly wind starting, but not quite showing that cold air reach all the way through the UK. So still a little bit to play for there, but all models are showing this colder northerly evolution. Just the severity and timing of it is uh, just the uncertainty at this stage. So we do finish by having a look at the ensembles for the GFS, so you can see around average, slightly above average over the next day or two, and then we slowly dip below average as more of a north to northeasterly flow arrives for the start of next week, and we stay below average for the foreseeable future, a good four to five degrees below average, so chilly um, conditions are very likely, whether we get down to that minus five to minus six level, we see about maybe a third to a quarter of our ensemble members go for that. The majority, though, all stay to around to minus two to minus four. So very cold indeed in the longer term. Some milder outliers, but nothing too crazy at this stage. The majority of the runs are pretty dry, but are showery. You can see loads of small precipitation spikes. So it's going to be very difficult to pinpoint it over the next couple of uh, weeks. Again, if we have a look at the dew points, again, as you can see, all trending towards freezing, not quite below freezing, but trending towards freezing, so showing a colder northerly evolution. And we have a look at the two meter temperatures and precipitation, you can see generally dropping to more to around 10 to 12 degree highs and could be colder in a few spots, maybe slightly milder in a few spots. And of course, those overnight temperatures um, are completely overdone here by the GFS. It will be colder than that with clearer skies and with cloudy skies, probably. Five, six degrees is about right. So regardless, it's going to be chilly. If we have a look at the ECM WF run, have a look at the 850 HP temperature and precipitation. Again, there's been the one of the ensembles that have caught on to this cold revolution earlier than the other runs, and you can see it is really still going for it. Over the next, uh, over, well, over the last few days of April and the start of May, all ensemble members, pretty much all, are around or below average. Quite a few are considerably below average, very cold. And some of those which are milder than average are likely to be colder than average in the longer term. They just have more of that high pressure sitting over the top of the UK and delaying the northerly wind. As you can see by the operational run, it's above average, but as we saw with it, it's evolving a northerly wind. So it's very likely if we did run that on another day or two, it would be well below that average line again. So we have to always take that into account sometimes with the ensembles, but it is generally much colder than average, still reasonably dry, there will be more precipitation around, but not expecting any major weather fronts at this stage or some massive uh, occlusions or disturbances. So that is one good thing. If we do have a look at the two-meter temperatures just to finish up from the ECMWF, you can see it is chilly for the end of April, start of May. Yes, 14, 15, 16 degrees at the moment, but dropping more towards 10 to 12 degrees. And of course, with a, nor a stronger northerly wind, it's going to feel colder than that, more like 8, 9 degrees or chillier in a few spots, especially near the coast and further northwards. And you can see generally overnight temperatures, yes, around 5 or 6 degrees, but locally would fall much lower than that with frosts likely to uh, in more exposed areas. Um, with clear skies will feel really quite chilly indeed. So we'll have to keep an eye on this over the coming days, but it is looking 
colder than average how much colder than average uh, and the timing of it is still yet to be determined but for the time being it doesn't look like we're seeing any major warm weather it's going to be dry but it's not going to feel particularly great over the coming weeks there will be some decent days here or there where temperatures maybe get to 14 15 degrees feeling a little summer like in the early afternoon where the sun is at its peak but it's not good we're not going to be seeing any sort of balmy evenings or anything of that sort at least for the next week or two so it is looking pretty chilly indeed so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon